Chapter 3 I looked immaculate, clean-shaven, smart-dressed, smelling nice. The gallery entrance was open and decorated with huge vases, full of enormous bouquets of yellow and purple flowers, decorating the pathway. There were waiters with trays loaded with glasses of champagne. I took one and mixed in with the crowd. All kinds of people came to see the exhibitions and enjoyed the free drink. There were young women with beautiful curves, all wearing expensive dresses and real pearls around their swan-like necks. As well as middle-aged women in their furs and diamond necklaces. All of them had their hair done for the occasion, but the shoes, for me, were the most interesting part, as they were colourful, covered in gems and with very high heels. The men, on the other hand, wore suits or tailcoats. All of us were happy to have the night out and socialise with other people over art. The gallery wasn't very big. Five rooms filled with exhibits, arranged on the red walls, with a small reception. Marcel clinked his glass and everyone's eyes looked in his direction. He'd prepared a brief speech about the collection and its history. The paintings, preserved during the war, were original works of famous artists displayed for the first time for the general public. I could not say I was a big art expert, but some of them struck me, and I spent quite a lot of time in front of one or another. At some point, however, I felt as if I was being watched, and secretly turned aside to spot my admirer, who happened to be a tall, medium-built man, probably in his fifties. He had shiny hair smoothed down with gel, his brown eyes watched, sharp and dangerous. His face was tough, offset with a big square jawbone. The man, when he had my attention, turned slightly, pretending he was admiring one of the paintings. I took a sip of the wine and went on looking at the art. Later, Marcel joined me and smiled. Do you like the paintings? he asked. Yes, impressive. I nodded my head. It is. Can you imagine? They were gathering dust in a basement, forgotten from World War II. He sounded proud of the chance to have them in his gallery. How did you come across them? I was curious to find out. It was Dave's project. He found the owner and made a deal with him. The least I could do was finish his work. Marcel's eyes grew wet, and he stared at one picture as he attempted to cover his human weakness. It is a wonderful idea, and you're doing extremely well. I said, attempting to lift his spirit. Thank you. He gave me a grateful look. Quite a lot of people have shown an interest in our exhibition tonight, Marcel. A sharp voice with a very strong German accent reached us from behind. I turned around and saw my secret admirer. Thank you, Franz. Let me introduce you to a friend of mine. Marcel said, Franz, this is Pete, a very good friend of Dave and I. Pete, this is Franz, the owner of this precious collection. How do you do, Pete? The man took my hand in his iron grip. How do you do, Franz? How did you come across such a huge collection? I did not give in to the intensity of his grasp, but instead tried to smile. His eyes looked emotionless, but his voice, on the contrary, now it became warmer as he tried to smile. It is one of those inheritances I did not expect to have. My dearest grandfather left me responsible for this, but I am glad to have it. He leaned his head slightly as an imaginary bow to his grandfather. It is quite a heritage. I looked at the paintings. Yes, indeed. He agreed. And what about you, Pete? What is your field of interest? I'm a journalist. I'm more intrigued by people's real nature. I lied. That is something. Many wise men have tried to reveal the secrets of human nature. It could be amusing or very dangerous. I suppose the idea came from your own past. He looked calm and powerful, standing almost ten inches taller than he actually was. 
I've not had to think about my family for a long time. My parents were not very kind people. They were strict and did not accept any disobeying of their rules. I became a sad person because of their philosophy on how to teach children. The only connection I valued was with my brother, who was always kind to me and who I admired a lot. But that was a personal matter and not something I would tell a stranger. So I said, it could be. People were gathering around us, trying to see the paintings, and we had to step back to allow the crowd to move closer. Marcel followed our conversation with curiosity and found a moment to interrupt. We can celebrate later over a glass of champagne. Why not? That's a great idea. Unfortunately, I feel very tired tonight. All these people make me feel claustrophobic. But we can do it tomorrow in my hotel room. Agree? Marcel answered for both of us. Why not? That's a great idea. Unfortunately, I feel very tired tonight. All these people make me feel claustrophobic. But we can do it tomorrow in my hotel room. Agree? Marcel answered for both of us. Agree. See you tomorrow night. After that, Franz mingled with the crowd, and we had no other opportunity to talk. He tried deliberately to avoid me, which I found very strange, but decided it was some kind of perverse habit. People were moving from one painting to another, or staying in the room talking to a friend about the collection, or business, or simply gossiping. Two hours later, the gallery started to empty. It was time for supper and the nearby restaurants, or the very expensive ones, began to host their usual clients, hungry to eat whatever was on the menu. The catering firm Marcel hired for the accession began to pack their staff and clearing the gallery. It was time for us to move out too. Later, with Marcel in the restaurant of the hotel I was staying at, we got back on Franz. He is a very strange type, Marcel confessed. Our first meeting was quite short and he did not talk a lot. I have a strange feeling about him. Do you know how he and Dave met? No. I think he was interested in some place in the country. Do you remember where? I might have it written down somewhere. Can we talk about the funeral we have to arrange? Yes, you're right. He's not got many relatives. As you know, his mother died in a terrible accident some months ago. She fell asleep and forgot a lit cigarette next to old magazines and newspapers. They alighted very quickly, and she inhaled a deadly amount of smoke. A sad story. His father? Another sad story. His father was an ex-soldier who disappeared a long time ago. No one heard about him from then on. And I was thinking my family was strange and did not love me. But I didn't say it. Instead, I asked, Other members? As far as I know, only his mother's sister. She's in care, and I doubt she could come at all. Cousins? Nope. Well, it's not much to do, is it? You're right. But we have to visit his aunt tomorrow. We talked about other arrangements and Marcel promised to settle them first thing tomorrow morning. 